Hey, math students, how you doing? So in the last video, we, uh, we developed some identities. And so in this video, I want to look at what do you do with those identities? I'll show you. Let's say, so we know what, uh, let's think about our unit circle. And uh, for now, I want to think in degrees. Usually I'm thinking in radians, but for now, let's think in degrees. So uh, um, we know what the sine, of, the sine and cosine and tangent of 30 degrees are. We know what the sine and cosine and tangent of 45 degrees are. We know what the sine and cosine and tangent of uh, 60 degrees are. What about 15? We don't know 15, do we? Let's find out. So we want to know, what is the sine of 15 degrees? Well, now we have an identity that will help us out there because 15 happens to be 45 minus 30. Actually, it's 60 minus 45 as well. We could use either one. Let's use 45 minus 30, okay? So this is going to be the sine of 45 degrees minus 30 degrees. So remember what our, uh, what our identity is? It says the sine of the first angle times the cosine of the second angle. Look up your identity and you'll see that this matches. Okay, that's sine of alpha, cosine of beta minus cosine of alpha, sine of beta. Okay, in this case, alpha is 45, beta is 30. All right, well now it's time to just fill in the blanks with the stuff that I know. Sine of 45 degrees, that's root two over two. Cosine of 30 degrees, cosine of, th that's a uh, root three over two. Minus cosine of 45, that's the same as the sine of 45, that's root two over two. And sine of 30, that's the first one I ever learned, that's one half. So now what do we have? We have the square root of two times the square root of three, which is the square root of six over two times two is four. Minus square root of two times one is square root of two over two times two is, whoop, <laughs> careful, is four. And that equals the square root of six minus the square root of two over four. And that's pretty much as far as we can go uh, simplifying that. But hey, we got ourselves an answer. Now I said a second ago, you know, you could also use 60 minus 45. Well, I'm curious, does that get you the same result? Let's see. Uh, we could have said 60 minus 45, which would get us, can you see that? Yeah, I think you can see that. Which would get us uh, the sine of 60 times the cosine of 45 minus the cosine of 60 times the sine of 45, all right? And let's see, that would be the sine of 60 is root 3 over 2. And the cosine of 45 is root 2 over 2. Minus cosine of 60 is 1 half. And the sine of 45 is root 2 over 2. Look, we have the exact same numbers that we did on this line. So yes, it's going to give us exactly the same answer. All right, good to know. Otherwise, our identity wouldn't be very good if it didn't work consistently. Uh, let's look at another example. Let's look at the example of... Um, let's say I have an alpha and a beta, and alpha is in quadrant 2, okay? So think about quadrant 2. Quadrant 2 is here. It's up in the, uh, uh, up in the northwest. Uh, we have a negative cosine, we have a positive sine, we have a negative tangent, okay? That's quadrant two. Uh, so it's in quadrant two, and we're gonna say the cosine of alpha is, uh, what are we saying it is? It's negative five over 13. And let's say we also have a beta. And beta is in quadrant one. That's the easy quadrant. That's where everything is positive, okay? And, um, and beta, what do we know about beta? We're going to say that the sine of beta is one-third. And I want to know what's the sine of alpha plus beta and what's the cosine of alpha plus beta. All right, well, in order to do this, I need a little more information. I need to know what's the sine of alpha, and I need to know what's the cosine of beta. 
okay? So the sine of alpha is going to be, first off, it's in quadrant two, so I know it's positive, okay? So I'm just going to put a little plus there to remind myself this has to be positive. Uh, and now what do I know? I know that the sine squared plus the cosine squared is one, right? So that means this is going to be the square root of one minus negative five thirteenths squared. Okay. Uh, all right. So uh, negative five thirteenths, if I square that, it's the same thing as positive five thirteenths. So this is going to be the square root of one minus 25 over 169. And the one, I can change that to a uh, 169 over 169. And so that's going to be square root of 144 over 169, which is 12 over 13. So my sine of alpha is 12 over 13. And that's, I remember now, there's a 5, 12, 13 uh, Pythagorean triple, uh, a right triangle. Okay, now I need my cosine of beta. Cosine of beta. Ugh, that's a terrible beta. Cosine of beta. There we go, that's better. Um, well, I guess I'm going to get it the same way. Sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. So this is going to be the square root. Let me get this out of the way. Uh, this is going to be the square root of 1 minus 1 third squared. So that's the square root of 1 minus 1 ninth. And that's just the square root of 8 ninths. And that's going to be the square root of 8, which is 2 root 2, over the square root of 9, which is 3. So now I have my cosine of alpha, sine of alpha, sine of beta, cosine of beta. Now I'm ready to rock and roll. All right, let's do it. So... What did I want? I wanted the sine of alpha plus beta. The sine of alpha plus beta is going to be sine of alpha, that's 12 thirteenths. Cosine of beta, that's 2 root 2 over 3. Plus cosine of alpha, that's negative 5 thirteenths. Uh, sine, cosine, cosine, sine of beta, that's 1 third. And so what does that get me? That gets me 24 times the square root of 2 minus 5 over 13 times 3 is 39. And that, my friends, is my answer for the sine. Haven't done the cosine yet. Let's do the cosine. Cosine of alpha plus beta is going to be, uh, let's see, cosine of alpha plus beta. That's going to be a cosine alpha, cosine beta minus, remember the cosine, the sines change, cosine alpha, cosine beta, minus sine alpha, sine beta. So cosine alpha is negative 5 thirteenths. Cosine beta is 2 root 2 over 3, minus uh, sine alpha, that's 12 thirteenths. Sine beta, that's 1 third. So here we end up with negative 5 times 2 root 2, that's negative 10 root 2 minus 12 over 13 times 3, also over 39. And that's my answer for the cosine of alpha plus beta. All right? Just, just a matter of plugging in what we know. Okay? Let's do another one. And let's get back to actual angles. Let's do the tangent of 5 pi over 12. Okay? Tangent of 5 pi over 12. Oh man, 5 pi over 12. What is that? Well, let's see. 5 pi over 12 is 3 pi over 12 plus 2 pi over 12, right? And 3 pi over 12, that's just pi over 4. And 2 pi over 12, that's just pi over 6. And those I know. I know the sine and cosine of pi over 4. It's uh, just root 2 over 2 for both of them. And, uh, well, hold it. Sorry, we're doing tangent. So I know the tangent of pi over 4, the tangent of pi over 4 is 1. And the tangent of pi over 6 is root 3 over 3. So I'm all set to go now. So this is going to be tangent of uh, pi over 4 plus the tangent of pi over 6, 
over 1 minus tangent of pi over 4 times the tangent of pi over 6, okay? And so now I'll say tangent of pi over 4, that's just 1, plus tangent of pi over 6, that's root 3 over 3. And this is over 1 minus uh, 1 times root 3 over 3, okay? And uh, I don't like fractions in my fractions, so how about we multiply both numerator and denominator times 3? So this is going to get us 3 plus the square root of 3 over 3 minus the square root of 3. And normally, I tell you, don't worry about rationalizing the denominator. In this case, though, actually, I am going to rationalize the denominator. And the reason I'm going to is because it simplifies it quite a bit more. So uh, to rationalize the denominator, I would multiply times uh, the conjugate of the denominator over itself. So this is going to be times 3 plus root 3 over 3 plus root 3, okay? Uh, this gets us 3 plus root 3 squared over 3 squared minus root 3 squared, which is 9 minus 3. And this is, of course, if I just uh, uh, square that binomial, I get 3 squared, which is 9, plus 2 times 3 times the square root of 3, which is 6, root 3, plus square root of 3 squared, which is 3, over 6. 9 plus 3 is 12. 12 over 6 is 2. And 6 root 3 over 6 is plus square root of 3. And that is the, is the, uh, the tangent of 5 pi over 12. All right. Uh, so these, uh, th these identities do actually help fill in, fill in a lot of gaps here. Uh, let's do another one. Let's do, this is going to be a short one. Let's do the cosine of 25 degrees times the cosine of 5 degrees minus the sine of 25 degrees times the sine of 5 degrees. Now, at first glance, I think to myself, <laughs> I have no idea what this is. Uh, I don't know what the cosine or sine of 25 degrees is. I don't know what the sine, I don't know what uh, uh, the cosine of sine of 5 degrees are. I, if I can't evaluate any of the, the uh, pieces of this, I'm not going to be able to evaluate the expression. Au contraire, my frere. Yes, you can. Because if you look at this, you see, hey, this is cosine, cosine, minus sine, sine. This is just the cosine of 25 plus 5, okay? Remember, if it says minus with the cosines, if it says minus, it's going to be plus. 25 plus 5, well, that's just the cosine of 30 degrees. What's that? It's root 3 over 2. Wow, that turned out to be easy. Wow. Okay, let's do another one. Uh, this is going to be our last one. And let's do one kind of like we did before, uh, where I'm going to give you an alpha and a beta. And I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to say alpha is in uh, quadrant two. And I'm going to say the sine of alpha is 24 over 25. And I don't know what the cosine is. And I'm going to say beta is in quadrant three. And the tangent of beta is three fourths. And I don't know what the sine is, and I don't know what the cosine is. Okay, what do I do? Well, um, remember what we did before to find the cosine? Uh, you probably got a calculator with you, right? Grab your calculator. I know that, uh, the sine squared plus the cosine squared equals 1. So take your sine of alpha, and that's uh, 24 over 25, also known as 0.96. Square that. Subtract it from 1, and you'll have something. Now take the square root of that, because what you got when you subtract this from 1 is the cosine squared. So take the square root, and what you will find is 7 over 25, or 0.28. But let's keep it in fractions. Let's call it 7 over 25. And uh, except, 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 we're in quadrant two. Think about quadrant two. Quadrant two is up this direction, okay? Uh, which means 
positive sine, negative cosine. So this is negative 7 over 25. Okay? Quadrant 3, right off the bat, I'm thinking both of these are going to be negative. So let me just put a negative right there before I forget. Now, I know what the tangent is. Now, in the past, I would always draw myself a little triangle and figure it out from the triangle. I don't need to do that anymore. I got my identities. My tangent is 3 over 4, okay? That means uh, the tangent squared... Uh, here, I'll do it. Yeah, we can see this. That means the tangent squared of beta is going to be 9 over 16. Uh, tangent squared plus 1 is secant squared, so that means the secant squared of beta is going to be this plus 1, so 9 over 16 plus 16 over 16, which is 25 over 16. So that means the secant of beta is 5 over 4. I'm just taking the square root of that, which means the cosine of beta is 4 over 5. Huh, okay. So the cosine of beta is, well, negative 4 over 5. And if the tangent of beta is 9 over 16, this time I'm just going to do it in my head, uh, if the tangent of beta is 9, sorry, tangent squared of beta is 9 over 16, that means the cotangent squared is 16 over 9, okay? If I add 1 to the cotangent squared, I get 25 over 9. But 1 plus cotangent squared is cosecant squared. So the cosecant squared is 25 over 9. That means the cosecant is 5 over 3, and the reciprocal, the cosecant, is sine. So that means the sine is 3 over 5, or actually in this case, negative 3 over 5, all right? I'm telling you, those Pythagorean identities come in really, really handy. All right, so now we have, uh, uh, we have our sine, cosine, tangent. Uh, well, we got our sine and cosine over here. We got our uh, tangent, sine and cosine over there. Now, wh what was I looking for? I'm looking for the sine of beta minus alpha and the cosine of beta minus alpha. Okay? All right, we can do this. So sine of beta minus alpha, this is going to be sine of, okay, I got to, in my mind, I need to switch my alpha and my beta here, okay? So this is going to be sine of beta cosine of alpha minus cosine of beta sine of alpha. So sine of beta is negative three-fifths. Cosine of alpha is negative seven twenty-fifths minus sine of beta, cosine of alpha, cosine of beta, cosine of beta uh, is negative four-fifths times sine of alpha, 24 over 25, okay? What, one thing that I do as I'm doing these is I look back over what I've done and I make sure I didn't use the same term twice. If I did, I made a boo-boo somewhere, unless you happen to have something with the exact same numerical value. Uh, but it's just a good way to sort of keep it straight in my brain. Okay, well, this is gonna be 21 over 125. Do we still have room? Actually, no, I'm gonna have to move this down. So this is gonna be uh, 21 over 125. Minus negative tells me plus, uh, I believe that is 96 over 125. And that equals, I believe that is 117 over 125. Okay? So my answer for sine of beta minus alpha is 117 over 125. Okay? Uh, cosine of beta minus alpha. Okay, this is going to be cosine, cosine, minus sine, sine, okay? Cosine, let me do it in the correct order. So cosine of beta, although it doesn't matter which cosine I use first, but uh, cosine of beta is negative four-fifths times cosine of alpha, negative seven twenty-fifths. If it says cosine of beta minus alpha, I'm going to put a plus there. Plus uh, sine of beta is negative three-fifths. And sine of alpha is 24 25ths, okay? And if I multiply all of this together, what I end up with is... Uh, hold it, did I do that right? Yeah, okay, yeah, sure. This is going to be uh, 28 over 125 
minus 72 over 125, which turns out to be negative 44 over 125, okay? Now, uh, one thing that I might do to try to verify that I got the right answer is I might take 117 over 125, square it, take negative 44 over 125, square that, add the two squares together, I better get one because the sine squared plus the cosine squared, if you're taking it at the same angle, must be one. So it doesn't prove that you're right, but it gives you evidence that you're right, okay? All right, that's all I got for you right now. I hope that this is helpful uh, on how to use these uh, new identities that we proved uh, of the sum and difference of angles, all right? Till the next video, adios.